Dominic and Joseph Kadri are already standing by in our Abuja Network Studio to continue the conversation on uh, the issue they raised earlier, which has to do with uh, multiple taxation. And I said, uh, you know, at that point that it's a national problem where you have people paying taxes, several layers of taxes, and in a sense, it adds up to the cost of production. Uh, Joseph, uh, take it away, yeah. with the prof is really uh, an informative one and uh, we all uh, we just <laughs> hope that um, of course what he said about the president uh, is uh, something that we all have actually uh, said our bit. Okay, quickly is to take a look at uh, what we had earlier which is uh, our revenue generation and the impact of double taxation here in the FCT, uh, focusing on AMAC. And to do this, we have uh, in the studio the chairman, AMAC Revenue Tax Force, uh, Yunusa Yusuf. Uh, very good morning to you. And of course, uh, my colleagues also here, Dominic, and we're doing this together. But let's start by looking at um, revenue for the FCT and the uh, multiple taxation, you know, introduced at different levels. Well, um, before now, I I know about a couple of people. I know about a couple of people who have actually lamented, not even within the FCT, across the nation, about double taxation when it comes to revenue. And then, um, is it double taxation, we'll call it, or repeated revenue co collection, or I think we can call it another name for a layman understanding. Um, I, I don't feel it's good or proper, because I feel for every revenue paid, the revenue should work for the people. The essence of paying revenue is to be able to, to sustain good governance. The presence of good governance, give back to the people, the community, the society, the villages. When revenue is paid, it is expected that you can tax the government for your primary health care for your road infrastructure. You can tax government for your hospital. You can tax government for your electricity. You can, that revenue is the sustainability of every system. When you want to talk about revenue, it is assumed that, let's assume government does not have any natural resources like oil, like uh, solid minerals, and every other natural resources that would have brought in IGR, internally generated revenue, or any other means of sourcing for the national budget, either national or local budget. So it is assumed that revenue is the only thing that will sustain the economy, the people, and maintain their living standard so that those facilities that have been enjoyed will be sustained, maintained, and be kept up to date. That's what I feel revenue should do. So in a case where there's a revenue, double taxation of the people, that is very bad and is a crime in the face of the law, and it is also an inhuman act that should not take place. Yeah, but you know you are the chairman of uh, tax force in, the, in, in AMAC, and most time uh, what we see and what we have intervened at different times is where you see uh, some person struggling with innocent 
um, you know, you know uh, Dominic Innocent cab driver. You see some person struggling with uh, the man at the corner shop. You see, you see, you see some persons struggling with even the keke and the, the Okada riders over payment of revenue. And these persons will tell you, I'm just coming from Guarimpa, I paid. I'm just coming from Guarimpa, I paid. Why do I have to pay another one? Okay. Um, one thing is that, let me say it clearly, Nigerians are not good at paying revenue. We don't like paying our taxes. That is the truth. In most cases, when you go to a well-developed country, um, the revenue based on your income is deducted automatically. But in Nigeria, you can be paid cash to cash, and then you're expected to pay your revenue. I think it's not a Nigerian thing alone, but it's all over the world. People don't voluntarily want to just pay revenue. Because one thing is that sometimes they feel government should be at the point of their needs. Forgetting the fact that this revenue is what it is required for government to be able to meet up to service some of the social amenities surrounding them. And um, another thing I understand is that apart from Nigerians not wanting to pay revenue, uh, people sometimes rely so much or the solely on the government. They, they, they depend like 90% of whatever that should happen to their communities. Even their personal responsibilities like making sure their environments are clean. They are expecting that government should come and do that for them. So it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's one mentality that we need to sensitize the people. What I, sh I have always believed is that revenue is not a personal thing meant for an individual. Revenue is, is collectively gathered. Like as we're sitting down here now, if you go to Chicken Republic, you will see under the receipt that you'll be given, value added tax. That is revenue for buying a snacks. You have collected some amount or some cobalt from you. That will, that will be remitted to the government? That will be remitted to the government. So revenue is everybody's business. That we must understand the importance and we must ask questions. What is our revenue giving back to the community and the society? But, uh, but let me stay uh, going back to find exactly why we are here multiple taxation because for so many persons out there might not really understand uh, what we intend to establish here we he's talking about persons who uh, after paying particular tax we are in the FCT one uh, is, is a state let's see it as a state no the FCT no, no in no. this context of our discussion no, 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 no. Don't describe it as a state as long the as the FCT I, is I, when, when the territory. When governors are voting, I am not voting. No, when on, there let is me, the House let of me explain to you. When, when there is House of Assembly, can I am I, can, not. Can I explain my? No, no can I don't, explain don't describe it as something. The FCT else. is the Federal what? Capital Territory. Fantastic. Now we are supposed to have one administration, right? Yes. The entire revenue collected from the area council is supposed to go to one post. Now, when you ask somebody who is coming from Buari to buy a ticket, for instance, and then you get to the FCT, you get to Amar, your similar ticket from two different area councils. We want to know why is more to taxation. Why do we have to buy from Amar and then buy from Buari when you are providing the same service for a transporter in the FCT? Can there be a unified tax for all the area council for one sector, for instance, transportation? But that's why we've always seen this back and front when it comes to the area of uh, multiple transactions. Okay, um, your question is a very good one, um, but I want to let you understand that we are establishing laws 
for the local government their powers to generate and collect revenue and then the 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 the, the, the boundaries their area of operations now for instance somebody is taking goods from Yanya, for instance, and is crossing into Kuji Area Council, and then he's traveling with it. Believe me or not, he has charged the owner of those goods that when I get to Kuji Junction from the express, I may be stopped, and I will have to pay 100 Naira. Because that is another different area of operation. And then the Kuji Area Council is expected to provide those social amenities and good governance for the people of Kuji. The roads that the driver is applying need to be maintained and be serviced. The COVID, the gutters, the primary health care, the water, the, all that. So for coming into Kuji, for instance, or into Amak, definitely you have to like show some level of loyalty by saying, okay, it's not as if it, that in that case we don't call it double taxation. What I would have described in the, as double taxation, I think I would do it in the GV. But in this case, those area of operation is that when you are collecting a ticket from Amak, it covers you round from Nyaya down to Guarimpa, right? Before you get to Kuba, where you have crossed to Guari, or before you cross from Maitama to where you have crossed into Papi, or before you get to after Guzapi and the rest of them, after Kubo. Before you get to Abacha Road, where you have crossed to Nasarawa, that's why you see a lot of revenue collectors. Immediately you say, welcome to Nasarawa State. You see other set of people there. Or before you get to Abaji, where you cross to Kogi State. Uh, at the course of my job, I've had a series of um, encounters with a lot of people. Because for every particular location, as long as it is carved out either as a local government, no matter how small the cycle is, or as a ward, let's assume, let's start from a ward. In this case, it's not polling unit. As a ward, a particular ward, from a ward councillor, revenue is expected till it get to the president. From a ward councillor till it get to the president, revenue is expected. So it's um, in that case, if we're talking about double transition now, we should be saying, okay, a set of people came, which is one of the challenges we have tried to see how we can, we can curtail in AMAC through the, my, the new administration led by Honorable Christopher Zaka and Michael Angu. If you look at today, hotel revenues, we have harmonized it. Even like where we are now on the TV station, your revenue have been harmonized. So that you don't get Mr. A and B coming to ask you for operational permits, um, TV license. TV license. Um, you're using um, heavy generators. We call it um, gaseous omission. And all those things, we want just one particular person to come to you. Sir, A, B, C, D, we think this is your revenue. You are to pay this. And again, we didn't stop at that. We have set up a mobile court where we have uh, like four judges who can look into your matter. You can complain about your revenue. Considering your structure, the consideration begins from your structure, your, 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 your operation, your patronize, everything is being considered in our bylaws. 
So anybody who is coming to you will definitely have to be an expert who will say, okay, based on what I saw on ITV, um, these people, this is their, their category. It is listed within the category of what you do. And how can it be rated before you are even given a bill? And then the bill given to you is agreeable for consideration. You can say, OK, um, this is my lot for the past so, so, so months. I have not made so, so amount of money. But I'm having this kind of revenue. I feel is huge. I need some soft landing. And then perhaps you might be considered. OK, now let's look at the uh, development part of view of uh, revenue collection, which you actually uh, talked about at your introduction. When taxes are collected, they are done uh, to provide some facility, basic facilities for for the people. You talk about the primary health care, that should be drugs. You talk about road. You talk about uh, even schools. That should be some educational materials. What we have observed uh, in the jurisdiction of Mekalangudi, Amak Chama, uh, there are so many bad roads, despite the fact that the people of Amak were, of course, um, a, an area comes that houses the president. Payment is almost immediately. They are respecter of law. They pay, and the services expected is not provided. Go to the primary health care centers, I mean, uh, it's not upgraded. Uh, drugs are difficult to get. When the schools are on, you go to most of the classrooms, um, uh, you discover that uh, some of the kids have difficulty uh, you know, uh, to, to have chairs where, of course, they sit. And we expect that uh, some books, uh, I mean, in fact, uh, you call it textbooks, should be provided for free, for free. Those are not there. What is happening in AMAC? OK. Um I, I don't wish to, to be the one to blow the trumpet mm. of the Amak Chama. Yeah, but there are things we also know. But there are things you also know, and then you can testify to the fact. When the chairman came in, he had a lot of challenges from um, the deficit met, which is about 2.8 billion naira. When we met that, it was about 2.8 billion naira. Apart from the debt we met, he has to face the battles of uh, political opponents who wanted a tenor of a location which was a distraction enough. And I, I, I want to tell you that. Yeah, but it's not only him. Other era comes to face that too. Uh, well, I think um, the target was him, particularly because. Um, it was so obvious to note. But nevertheless, the chairman have not relent. He has been up and doing. If you see the massive projects, I can tell you not less than 30 to 40 routes that have been graded. So far, so good. Within a space of one year. Yeah, but when the rains come, it will wash them off. We're talking about construction. What I'm saying now is this. There are communities that have no access completely, just some 10 kilometers away from here now, you'll be shocked of what you see within the communities. I've always said it, that the development people talk about Abuja is centralized in the city center. Does no go in in the rural communities. And in most cases, when we have chairmen who only concentrate in the city center, you go to somewhere like Karu. There is a village called Gugugu. I am telling you, when there is a serious rain drop, you can't enter there. Go to some of the villages around Jua, Karshi, and the rest of them. And most of us have to live in those areas because we cannot afford the, 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 the houses within the city centers. These houses are for the, the world to do. And then if, or else you want to steal, or you want to loot the system. So the chairman have been concentrating solely 
on this rural community. But how come we don't know? We don't see no. him. We, 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 maybe we, we have no, 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 never no. seen him. They are all over. I can show you a lot of them. No, we should, we, we, and we again, should be there. And again, and again, the, 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 the passion of the chairman alone to, 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 to block revenue leakages in AMAC is commendable. This is the first time a chairman have come out to say no. No technical partner. Don't pay to a third party. Don't pay to a third party. Mm. But or no technical partner mm. will pay AMAC. Before now, we have a, a situation where somebody who generates, for instance, 500 million will give AMAC 50 million in a year. We feel that that is barbaric, that is inwoman, the money being gathered by all Nigerians is not working for them. And the chairman, in his wisdom, has to now first of all say, okay, I've dissolved everybody. But the people who are, I want to engage will be working on percentage. If you're not ready, go. If you're ready to work on percentage, and the chairman, again, in his wisdom, gave them one one year, one one year, to test run their capability and ability. Because some of them will just come, collect an award letter to serve as revenue generating uh, agency or, or company. For giving them the award letter, they will sell to Mr. C. From Mr. A to Mr. B, then Mr. C will buy it and say, I'm the one who has the capability to do the job. Then Mr. T is trying to see, by all means, he has bought a job, and he has to recover his money and his interest. So we have been able to curtail that kind of level of communication between these people. What we are doing now is that we are digitalizing the revenue collection method in AMAC. Yeah, but how does that make um, life easy for the people of the area? Now, it, it that makes the main areas thing. of yeah. water yes. area of concentration for this administration. Because yes. like so we can monitor. We will hardly see any project executed by your your principal, just like you are mm -hmm. trying to portray. There have been there. so many projects. I will, um, by virtue of this communication, I think um, by the grace of God, um, by this time next week, we can repeat um, a very comprehensive play of video where I will take you around and show you some tangible projects within local communities. I think I, will, I have what it takes to, to make sure you give me some of your representatives who have civil society organizations and then let me prove to Nigerians that I didn't come on air to tell lies. Mm. So that we can go there and I will point A, B, C, D to you. Mm. You will even interact with some of the community people. They will tell you their living conditions before now mm. and then after mm. what we have done to those communities. Mm. I know about not less than 20 something bulls so far mm. that we have given to the people, the real people mm. that need water. We know I can show you where we have a lot of um, cut off communication between communities as a result of um, the bridge, water erosion that have taken away their bridges mm. and all that which we are currently doing, mm. providing solutions for communities. Now, what is that is that just like I told you before, mm. there were so many challenges. We had so many court cases when we came into power as the chairman of AMAC. There they were so much debt to be settled in fact, we have cases where a contractor have worked 100% and he was not paid. And then he refused to step down light to a particular community. Mekalangu paid. Mekalangu paid. Mm. We have series of them. I will take you point to point. I'm not sure you will even be able to finish it in the space of a week. If you give me from now until next Monday, you will not be able no, to finish it. Why not? So, if, so, if, so if ITV is, is ably engaged, why can't we so, we, we so, can, so, we can so go around and, there is, and, there is and more see what the eyes, eyes, AMAC is doing? There is more to what the ears hear and what the eyes can see visibly. Hmm. 
Mekalongu, as far as I'm concerned, I think um, you will come back here and tell me he's one of the best chairman ever. Mm -hmm. yeah, until we see what, yeah, what, until we see we see what he has done. Uh, does this oblique trend in mm -hmm. revenue collection, I don't know, we, we, we're saying it in the course of our discussion in the beginning of the term, where you see your tax force jumping on moving vehicles, harassing people simply because you want to get that. I don't know. What is the modality? Struggling with their car keys. Yes, that you're supposed to put on ground to get these persons to pay loan. You are in the modern modern age. We, we don't need to start having people. Yeah, why do you engage to, hoodlums to, okay, to, um, to, to, to no, collect no, taxes? No, 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 no. La, like, um, again, Honorable Christopher Azaka uh, Michael Angu, um, the executive chairman of AMA, in his wisdom, have set up a tax force, a revenue tax force who are constituted by professionals, graduates, to checkmate the activity, to monitor, inspect, and enforce. Mm. That's our mandate. And that's, I am the chairman. A rule. Yes. I am the chairman of the tax force mm. on revenue collection in AMAC. So how many persons have you dealt with? Now, so far, so good. The last operation we went, we got about 13. 13 persons who are illegal tax force collectors mm. who goes to UTC to go and print receipts. You can imagine the desperation. They go as going to UTC to print receipts to collect revenue on behalf of tax, uh, AMAC. And even they are the same people who mm. will harass people. And in short, you can be very civil and still generate revenue okay uh, uh mr Ch <laughs> mr chairman <laughs> our mark revenue uh tax force uh you know, sir yusuf you know time is not our friend here yes. uh some other time we'll definitely invite you to continue from uh where we stop um uh, our colleague in benin uh mr sonny duke okosun uh if you can hear me let's um it's uh, it's a very it's a very robust discussion <laughs> Uh, that you just had with uh, the Chairman Revenue Task Force. I'm, I'm particularly enamored by the sheer brilliance and uh, comprehensive understanding of the issues of revenue generation, the challenges and the solutions. Um, that's, that's a great guy you had. And he just uh, he tacitly gave uh, you guys a media contract. I hope... Uh, uh, Joseph Kadri, you can follow up on this and bring it to a logical conclusion. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. That's our package today on TMI.